talking about not falling into the teacher trap, not falling into the website trap. So today, what teachers can you learn from? We just told you that the Aka Wu tells you that we're all a great teacher at the same time. So who are you going to learn from? You're going to learn from brothers like Sarnetta. You're going to learn the positives and negatives from brothers like Sarnetta. You're going to learn the positives and negatives of people like Brother Polite. The positives and negatives of people like Sara Sutton Seti. You're going to learn from Maurice Muhammad, Talik Ibn Rod. You're going to learn from Netter Cat. You're going to learn. you definitely going to learn from King Noble. you definitely going to learn a little something something from Brother Daku. But we ain't the only teachers in the world. There are other people in your lives right now that are teaching you things that you need to know. Now, do you follow your teacher every single place and everywhere? Not necessarily. But if you got a good teacher, your teacher is going to teach you how to think, not what to think. And if you learn how to think, then you can be critical of all information. You can question anything. Your teachers ain't going to get mad. Huh? Your teacher, if he's your, truly your teacher, give me the question. Bring them on. If I can't answer the question, then I'm going to meditate on it, reflect on it, and try to get back with you with the answer, get back to you with the answer. But I'm also going to encourage you to think. It's important for you to think. You're not just my student, you're also my teacher. I'm not your teacher, I'm also your student. Don't fall into the teacher trap. This has been Daku Akabo Wakatu. The last three generations of black Americans are the weakest black generations in world history. This is evident by several facts. In order to keep us in subjugation during chattel slavery, they had to make it illegal for us to read and write. Now, today, not only are you permitted to read and write in the midst of this race war, they even teach you to read and write because they know that you won't write anything like Blueprint for Black Power by Dr. Amos Wilson. You won't write anything like Yurugu, an African-centered critique of European cultural thought and behavior by Dr. Marimba Ani. You won't read anything except books like Video Vixen or the subtitles on ESPN. The second fact is that when you were a real threat to white supremacy and white power, you were not permitted to grow your own food. But once they neutralized you as a threat, they no longer had to worry about your growing your own food. Once we became integrated, they learned, we taught them, that we would look to them to supply us not only for our own food, but for all of our other daily survival needs. So after they realized that we trust them to feed us, they proceeded to drop nutricide bombs, as we've told you many times before, all over the black community in the form of fast food restaurants, Chinese restaurants, and liquor stores. And we would not only voluntarily indulge in these poisons, but we would voluntarily overindulge in these poisons, following in the footsteps of the goddamn white man. Now, the final piece of evidence we'll offer today is that when we were true threats to white supremacy, the goddamn white man wouldn't even permit us to meet three deep. Because in those days, if only three of us met, chances were we'd be planning some type of rebellion to not only strike a blow for freedom, but also avenge the defeat and death of our ancestors. Today, not only will the oppressor permit three to meet, he'll permit 3,000, 30,000, 300,000 of our most revolutionary, our most so-called conscious black men and women to meet. And the most we'll produce is a watered-down speech or a debate. We couldn't even meet at church at one time. 
because the goddamn white man knew that we were studying the Bible from a black liberation perspective. We have black colleges and universities with thousands of students all over America. But with all this so-called knowledge and spirituality that we've attained while in the hells of North America, we still produce very little for our collective selves. They let you congregate on the street all hours of the night because they know you're only going to come up with how to pimp your own people, how to sell poison to your own people. The only question that you're going to have, and he knows it, is how you going to get turned up tonight. What party you going to go to? What liquor you going to drink tonight? He's not afraid of us meeting today because he knows that the only one you're a threat to is yourself. Wake up, black people. This has been Daku Akabo Waakatu. Well, howdy there, partners. This is The Reality's Tip on Earth, and you've come to the right place. I am, of course, the mighty one, Angel Snub Nub 7. <laughs> oh, man. Y'all, social media, the people that come to social media, it gives you a voice whereas you would not have a voice. Well, actually, you have a voice, but social media allows us to reach many, many people. In fact, if it was not for social media, your chances of knowing who the mighty Angel Snub Nub 7 is would probably be null and void, except those who are actually was able to speak with in person and that's where I come from I come from a place where most of my interaction was with people in person social media allows us to cuss people out be disrespectful ignorant and profane and vile and vulgar and nasty it allows us to do that while we hide behind a computer, we hide behind writing. And so this is very puzzling to me because the very same people who are on social media, and you know darn well your behavior would be different if you had to interact with people in person. You want to call, and this is what, this is why, uh, what I find so, so funny. There are a group of persons, and what brings me to this particular topic is that I saw a comment <laughs> on one of my videos, <laughs> or maybe it was somebody else's video, I, I really don't know, but I've seen the comment and I, I've heard it before, but upon this particular comment, the person, the faceless person, was saying that Angel Snub Nub 7 is a bully. Can you believe that? I'm a bully. And not only, <laughs> not only am I a bully, but I, I'm asking people, <laughs> I'm asking people to pay me to bully them. <laughs> Woo. Now, I don't know what I'm doing to be a bully but when you cuss people out I don't cuss people out that's what you do you run around and there's a topic that we want to speak about you can't stay on the topic you want to try to take personal shots at people talk about their mama their daddy 
the car they drive, you ain't got no job, anything other than the topic. You want to make market, you don't have no hair on your head, baldy. You old. You gay. Whatever. I don't do that to people. I don't make mockery of people. There's a topic. There's a subject. And I speak upon that subject. I don't false flag people. When y'all get angry. When you get upset. You false flag videos. You tear down channels. You spread lies and gossip. Things that you can't prove. You just lying. Gossip spreaders, male and female. But I'm the bully. I'm not spreading lies and gossip on nobody. I'm not false flagging videos. I'm not terminating channels. I'm not making mark of nobody. I'm not cussing people out. But I'm the high and I'm the bully. What makes you angry is that I have a right to defend myself. And not only do I have a right to defend myself, but I can tolerate your cussing. I can tolerate and know how to deal with your personal shots. I know how to I survive false flagging. Your lies and your rumors and your speculations and all those different things does not bother me in the least. This is what makes you mad. And yes, I will charge. To interact with faceless people. There is a reason why. People are faceless. You have no videos. You have no following. There is no benefit. Except you think that you're going to use me. As your entertainment. There is no benefit. To debate you. Or interact with you. There is no benefit. I only interact with those who have videos. Who have a following. That is worthy. Of such interaction. And most of these people show their face. If I had messed around. And had to interact with every Tom, Dick and Harry. That don't have a face. I'm not going to waste my time like that. It will be forever. And when it's all said and done. Like usual. You're going to lose the debate. You're going to lose whatever the opinion is. You're going to lose anyway. So if you want me. So yes. You will have to pay me to beat your ass. It's as simple as that. I am the most powerful voice on YouTube. And I have proven that over and over again. If you think I'm wrong, here's the send me the email, pay the fee, step up to the plate, and prove me a lie. It's as simple as that. Most of y'all don't know how to debate. You have no idea what to do. You don't know how to. You don't know how to defend your opinion. You don't know how to present your opinion. And your whatever you debate, your position is only as strong as that opinion. Your opinion is weak to begin with. But the main thing here is y'all don't know how to debate. If you were a defense a attorney and you know that your client is wrong you have to know how to defend your client and you know that your client is wrong that is not my fault that is your fault take some debate classes or something change your opinion because I'm going to defend this ministry if I thought I could not defend this ministry I would not come out here not only can I not only can I defend this ministry, this ministry has a strong foundation, but it has a strong, articulate, charismatic voice to back it up. You don't have those things. You just some fella that pick up a camera and just talking off your head, you really have not thought about what you want to say. Then you want to get angry because you come up against a powerful voice. A powerful voice a powerful voice and you can't do nothing with me and you welcome to try anytime y'all big y'all big shots with videos and you think that you know it all and have a following I'll be happy to accept your challenge and for all y'all faces one I'm not gonna waste my time yes 
You pay the fee. And I'll be happy to debate you on Skype, by the written word, video by video, however you want to do it. As soon as I get, get your fee. No problem. In the meantime, I am the most powerful voice on YouTube. And ain't nobody yet can take that away from me. With that said, the real bully are y'all faceless, troublemaking, instigating trolls. You are the one. And we do know that he's going to bring about a complete change. As uh, I study now, for 33 years after his coming, I have learned my own self from study of his words, what he said to me. That uh, it won't be a world like uh, we see today, nothing of the kind, not uh, even to the orthodox Muslim. Their world will not uh, even be considered in his world. As uh, <coughs> the master scientist, a god, 6,000 years ago, Mr. Yacoub, he did not make this world, your world, uh, on the basis of uh, our world. We have a complete new world and a new people uh, in you. So will the, uh, the great uh, Mahdi, uh, Master Farad Muhammad, he will also build a new world and a new people. And he did tell me that uh, uh, how that uh, we would uh, start taking a change in a new people. Now, just exactly what uh, we will look like, I'm not too sure of that, but I do believe that he's going right back at the origin, but he's going to make a better people. Uh, what I mean to say, a people that will be more stronger physically and uh, they will be taught in such way that they can live much longer. Uh, an individual will live probably a thousand or more years in teaching something about the history, not the history, but uh, about the people on Mars. He often would refer to me uh, that just think of them living 1,200 uh, of our earth years. He says, and we dine less than 100 years. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host of this particular program, known here on the internet as the mighty, 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 mm, Angel Snup Nup 7. I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I would like to say very quickly and give much honor and homage to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad on this day that would have been his 116th birth anniversary. If not for the teachings, the influence of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, there would be no Realities Temple on Earth ministry. I do not know how the messenger of Allah would feel about many of the things that I say from this particular rostrum. However, there must be evolution in all things. That which cannot evolve, that which is not flexible, that which 
cannot change in this life if it is living then it is subject to extinction and I would hope that the messenger of Allah would not see this ministry as something opposing his teaching but an evolution into what he described in the clip that I played before I made my own appearance. An evolution into the insight of a future that Master Farah Muhammad spoke of. I am so happy to be a student of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now, I want to briefly speak about what the Messenger of Allah was saying in this clip. <clears throat> and again, happy birthday, happy anniversary to the Messenger of Allah, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, forever the greatest influence on my life and my spiritual father. <laughs> I know it is an odd combination of a man who represents a form of religion and now a man who says he disbelieves. <laughs> strange combination but what Master Farah Muhammad spoke to and taught to Elijah Muhammad about the future of the black man is also strange it is also something that we would not be used to we will not ourselves see this glorious future However, it is something that can be a possibility. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad says in this clip that there must be a complete change. That Master Farah Muhammad impose his will. And there will be upon this planet in human life that affects human life a complete change change nothing like we know now I would say to those who are under the voice of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and you may not like this but even the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says in this clip he does not mention anything that describes of Scientology in fact, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says in this clip that Orthodox Islam would not be part of the new world. It would not be part of the complete change. When you change your oil, you are attempting to completely rid yourself of the old oil and put in new oil. If it was possible to get every little drop of the old oil out of your engine you would do that a complete oil change means you change the filter the oil itself and all that which relates to an oil change a complete change a complete oil change a complete change of this world the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says in this clip to bring in and produce a brand new people you will not be a people that would go from Elijah Muhammad's teaching just to copy those who practice Orthodox Islam. You see this under the leadership of Minister Louis Farrakhan. Changing from the messenger's teachings to Orthodox Islam. You saw this in Warth Dean Muhammad taking or going from Elijah Muhammad's teaching to Orthodox Islam and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad makes very clear in this clip that Orthodox Islam would not be part of the complete change. It would not become part of the new world order. 
that Master Farah Muhammad is speaking of. Master Farah Muhammad is imposing his will to produce a brand new people. When the Caucasian people came into power, they became the gods of this civilization. They were to build a brand new world, something that was opposite of the Africans, something whereas the Africans could not make a claim. This is was the attempt of the Caucasian people. Of course, with the present day knowledge, we know that this world designed and created by Caucasian people, by the racist pink people, we know that they took bits and pieces, in fact, stole much of their, their scholarship, their sciences, mathematics, everything from the original people. But yet and still, if you compare what they built, this civilization to what was in the past built by the Africans or the black people or any dark skinned person, you will see that they are in total opposition of what dark people were doing and how dark people were living. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches that the black man is the original man, the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, cream of the planet earth, God of the universe. There must be a complete change because at this time you are worshiping God, but the black man is God. And if the black man is God, according to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, then gods don't worship gods. So you are praying seven times a day. You are going to church and Christian churches and y'all are praying and you are foaming at the mouth trying to win favor of some God. When if Elijah Muhammad is teaching us that the black man himself is God, you don't worship God. You are God. God has servants. God don't worship other gods. Master Farah Muhammad talks about a complete change. And the scriptures of the Bible agrees with Master Farah Muhammad by saying that there will be a new heaven and a new earth and the former things shall pass away. All these things that you know of, Orthodox Islam, Islam, Hebrew Israelite, Kemetic teachings, African spirituality, everything that you know of in this world that we know of now must become former and it is of the former things, and they must be allowed to pass away. None of these things would be allowed in the new world. But y'all clearly say that you want to be part of the new world order, but the new world order does not permit those things that you want to bring into the new house. These things would be considered mud, and you would be tracking up the new house with this mud on your shoes. That's not going to happen. So as long as you pray to some God. And that's why I say that this ministry demonstrates. And it is a microcosm. Of a giving us a glimpse into the new thinking. The new reality. Which it is not a new reality. We have been living in delusions. We have been living in fairy tale land. Now we're coming up out of delusions and fairy tales and fiction. Only to accept our reality. And reality would be opposite of this world. This world was based on lies and deceit. Fiction and fairy tales. The new world order would be that of our super reality. No more fairy tale stories. No more gods and goddesses and kings and spirits and spooks. Master Farah Muhammad was the first person to bring us God in a real sense. Master Farah Muhammad made God and taught that God was flesh and blood. While everybody else gives us God as some kind of spook that come out the sky and spirits. But now, Master Farah Muhammad, in his wisdom, according to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, brings the total and complete change. We were living in the process of change. But now, with the ending of this world and the extermination of the races, 
comes a brand new dynamic, a new world order. Who will want anything of this world to survive? After all we've been through, why would we want anything that resemble this world? This is why also in my conclusion, this is why Lot's wife in the scriptures was turned to a pillar of salt because there was something in Sodom and Gomorrah that she wanted. The reason why you cannot transfer your mind and you don't understand the reality of temple ministry is because there's something in this old world that you love. You love your orthodox Islam. You love your Scientology. You love your commission, your Egyptian teachings, your African spirituality, your ghosts and your goblins and all these other different things that you that you hold dear to in this life. But it will not be allowed in a brand new world. A new world order, the real new world, the new world order, not created by races, a complete change. And if you're not ready for that complete change, then I don't know what else to tell you because. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host or the gatekeeper of this particular program, known here on the World Wide Web as the Mighty, Mighty. Mighty mm. Angel Snub Nub 7, I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Yes. I have very good news, very wonderful news to all these so called black men. You are so brave. You are the leader of the household. You are the provider. You are the protector. You are so much of all these glorious things. But in reality, you are a coward. And guess what? The good news is that y'all cowards, you get a break. Because there is information that will help you to justify your cowardice against a vicious, wicked, violent enemy. This is why you are scared of the racist Caucasian people because you know how tough this fella is. And you holler that you are God. And you holler that you're a soldier and a warrior. But you have yet to pick up not one rock, one pebble, one BB gun, nothing in this modern day and time against this vicious enemy. When he catches you with a gun, you take your happy ass to jail with all your kill the cracker talk, bang on the beast talk. What does this tell us? But there is a way out, cowards. There's a natural way out. It is said and it is being reported that the sun will kill the Caucasian people. It is being reported that the Caucasian people are having a hard time producing babies so they suffer from 
low birth rate. So if you just wait it out, you don't have to worry about them too much. Or do you? Because the sun, as these UV rays come through the atmosphere, of course, having dark skin, it will help protect you from the sun's rays more so than a non-melanated person. So you figure that the sun itself will kill all the pink people. You figure that it's just a matter of time that since they cannot have or produce babies, you will be rid of them. No skin off your back. So you don't have to be, you can claim and holler and scream, I'm a warrior, I'm a soldier. But you don't have to prove nothing. You don't have to do nothing. The sun or their inability to uh, reproduce themselves or maybe a spaceship or some spirit going to come out the sky and save you. But yet and still, you claim to know so much history, but history tells us none of this has ever happened. The sun has never killed the enemy. Even a low birth rate has not done anything against an enemy. Has not happened in, in history. It's not a historical fact. Either you stand up against your oppressor or you remain his victim. You remain his or her slave. And so after 400 years, although a few black people have stood up and they have fought and died, the majority are cowards. You don't deserve your freedom, and, all, and a coward can only produce a coward. So it is not a shock or surprise to me that we find ourselves in the condition that we are in because the brave black man, the brave black woman, were getting slaughtered, lynched, castrated, torn and feathered, leaving behind the cowards. And we may not like it or not, but we are the children of these cowards. That's why we are so docile. We're going to wait for the sun to burn them up. We're going to wait for their low birth rate. But yet and still, that's a long way off. And so any children that you have, the only thing that you are going to give them is slavery, oppression. The same exact thing. Although the Caucasian people suffer from low birth rate, according to the uh, stats, according to, what's the word I'm looking for? But anyway, you will not see nothing like this until the year 2050. All of us, by 2050, chances are we will no longer exist. And your children will be 60, 65, 70 years old. So until that time, they will suffer and they will be producing more slaves. Nothing will change. And just because the Caucasian people physically may not be as strong as they once were, we underestimate the enemy because it is not pink or white skin that has been the problem. It just so happened that pink or white skin lives or resides or it, it resides a certain mentality within that pink or white skin. And you, uh, you very much underestimate Caucasian people because they understand that it is more than about flesh and blood. It is about a mentality. 
It is about a certain spirit. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that the Caucasian people, the white, the white race, is a race of devils and the skunk of the planet Earth. So even if you get sprayed by a skunk, and although the skunk is gone, you might kill the skunk. But the skunk has drenched you in his stench. So you still stink. So although it may be a possibility that by the year 2050, that Caucasian people will become extinct or very rare. The mentality could be very much alive because the mentality has no skin color. It can easily be transferred from Caucasian people to somebody else. So while you are hooping and hollering about uh, the demise of Caucasian people, the mentality can easily be transferred into somebody else. May perhaps the brown people who are gaining control of this nation along with Asians and whomever. This does not stop or will make our situation any better. And on top of this, you yourself, the black man and woman, the descendants of slaves born in America, we have this Caucasian mentality. What is the mentality? When you talk about success, it is of material gain. We have become greedy. We are murderers, murderers of self, but we are murderers. When we look at Africa, it's always about the material wealth of Africa. Africa has diamonds, Africa has gold, Africa has all these different things. It is not love of the continent itself. It's what the continent, what you can steal, what you can rape the continent from, for. What will make you different from the people that have become extinct? We, we underestimate the enemy. So you just changed from white, pink supremacy. Now you want to claim black supremacy. But if black supremacy is nothing but a colorized version of pink supremacy, then the only thing that is going to happen, you're going to get rid of one oppressor and exchange that oppressor for another oppressor. Then instead of saying or complaining about, man, I sure hate white folks. Now you're going to sit back and complain, I don't like the Japanese. I don't like the Chinese. I don't like the Mexicans. I don't like the Brazilians. The only thing that's going to happen is a change of oppressor and you will still be in the same condition that you're in. The only thing that has happened, you change your massa. Whoever controls this planet you have a problem with population control. That's still going to be in effect. It is only so much, so many people. There is not enough disease. There are no natural predators. There are too many people on this planet. And we continue to go more and more and more. We want to talk about Africa. But Africa is not limitless. After a certain period of time, the oil will run out, the gold, the diamonds, the forest, the trees, everything that you speak about and brag about and want, it will run out.
What about your babies? What about your future generations? What's going to happen to humanity, period? So who will eventually get the last laugh? So what? The Caucasian people went extinct. But during that period of time, they had everything. And they enjoyed themselves. But you will slowly starve to death. And starvation is one of the worst types of suffering that you can go through. It's a slow, horrible death. And you will be bragging and happy that the Caucasian people are extinct. The racism is gone. Well, actually, it will not be gone. Because you will continue to say, you will continue classism. You will continue gender bias and all these other things. What is going to make you different? Ding dong, the witch is dead. Get out of bed. Ding dong, the wicked witch is dead. The Caucasian people are dead. They are extinct. But they had a, while they live, had a very good time. What are you going to do to change things? What are you going to do different? Because when it's all said and done, when it's all said and done, the Caucasian people would get the last laugh because you carry their mentality and their mentality equals death. That's the only, that's the only consequence. That's the only, that's the only thing that's gonna, that can happen. And The Bible says, all, not me, not you, not she, not he, not those, not them, all have fallen short of the glory of God. So that means everybody got some kind of raggedy problem. All of you are messed up. So why are you talking about what white people do this and white people do that? You messed up too. And Caucasian, while you point your finger saying this and that and out of all the people, now, according to your history, you really messed up. So you really need to shut your damn mouth and listen to folk. But y'all, all of you are self-righteous. But the Bible tells you, and you go to church every Sunday or Saturday or Wednesday, whenever you go, and you know these religious teachings, that all, not some, all have fallen short. The glory of God. But y'all point fingers like you goody two shoes like you perfect. Then when you come here and I bring you your reality and beat the hell out of you. You can't handle the real truth. So you start crying like a baby. Oh I don't like what you say Dali. You mean and then you go somewhere where somebody can feed your nasty and foul egotistical self-righteous ego. So if you think that's what I'm about then you need to unsubscribe because all have fallen short the glory of God it also said that your uh, righteousness is as rags in the sight of God so you got a problem here that you need to work on not some people have problems and you perfect all Everybody has a problem. That's why nobody is fit to judge except God. Brother Talik, you don't believe in God. Why are you saying these things? I believe in the real truth. I believe that which is correct. And there's nothing wrong with what I just said because it's accurate and it's true. Everybody here has problems. Everybody here is not perfect. All have fallen short. The glory of God or however you want to put it. You don't even have to say God in it. You all have fallen short. Period. Everybody has problems. So if you want to live in la la land. Your fantasy world. 
where you so self-righteous and you got it going on, then I suggest that you leave this house because sooner or later, while you cheering, go brother Talit, go. Talk about them devils. Talk about them Negroes. Talk about them women. Talk about them men. Sooner or later, in this house of reality, sooner or later, it's going to be your turn and you're not going to like what is being said because in this house, I am the man in the mirror to show you what you really look like. Not just you, but the house shows myself what I really look like. And some of us are monsters. And you know it. Pretending to be an angel and you're not. So you want to get away from those who show you the man in the mirror because you don't want to accept the responsibility of being the monster that you really are. And you're a monster because you have fallen short of the glory of God. And instead of trying to correct that which is an error, you try to justify your actions and keep rolling on. So that is why humanity is in the condition that it's in because it has created these problems and situations and refused to accept the responsibility of their actions and the problems and the error continue to grow instead of being solved, resolved, and done with. But when we come to this house that I call the reality's temple, then the object is for us to recognize that we have fallen short. Understand our error, correct that error so that we can move on. So if there is a God, if there is an Allah, that we may begin to look good in the eyes of the Lord. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Now, we cannot judge, lest ye be judged. I am not above being judged. And I'm not so low that I cannot also judge. But some of us are in positions where we might know what we're talking about. A criminal who is a rapist, a robber, and a murderer, lying and deceiver, you don't have room to be really talking about somebody else. You are really in what they say, the little kids say, you really in deep doo-doo. How the hell are you going to judge and talk about somebody? You just got too much. You just have too much stuff going on with you. You have a lot of work to do. But Brother Talik is in a position and it's not being arrogant. It's not being egotistical. But I don't have that kind of blood on my hands. When I was a child, when I was a child, I've done dumb things because as a child, you're just so ignorant. I did not have the proper mother. I did not have the proper father. I did not have the proper spiritual guidance. And I was a child. So when you are a child, you don't you lack certain maturity. You lack certain experience. So you end up doing dumb things. So as a child, I stole. As a child, I was a liar. As a child, I did dumb things that I shouldn't have been doing. But as you grow up, but as a adult male, as an adult man, as a mature human being, they say after 18 years old, after 18 years old, when I was considered grown, I began to put childish things aside. I have never been a smoker. I have never been a user of drugs. Legal or illegal, I don't like drugs, period. 
I have never been a whoremonger. There's a lot of these things that y'all experience I've never been. And if you compare me to a lot of you, I'm almost as clean as the driven snow. But I'm not because all have fallen short of the glory of God. I've fallen short in other ways. But some of y'all really dropped off the wagon. So when I talk to you, I can talk because I don't have all that on my back. You are whore. Where well, you were, maybe you still are. You a pimp, prostitute, drunkard, dope fiend, self-righteous in the church. Think you all that, and you have a, and you have an, an affair with the preacher. Y'all all messed up. You hate white people for no real reason. You hate black people for no real reason. Y'all all screwed up. So, another screwed up person, and you know they are screwed up, they are not in the position to judge you because the first thing you're going to do is point their sin. But see, I can talk because you ain't got all that. You, you don't have all that with me. So I can talk about it. I can tell you because I did not fall into the trap that apparently you have. But all have fallen short. The glory of God. But in my having the strength to avoid those traps. Then I can share an experience. I can share a word that can help us. Not to make mockery of you. Not to make fun of you. Not to say, oh Talib, you so great because you ain't a whoremonger and you don't drink and you don't smoke because I'm not better than you. But to give us a word, to give us a message to inspire and to encourage so that we may become the great person that we have the potential to be. Because as your brother, I want what is best for you. Just like if you're my brother or my sister, you want what is best for me. My black people, it's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like Dr. King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire and reality simple. Reality simple. My black people, it's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like Dr. King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire and reality simple.